Uh, my name is Toisha Tucker. I'm originally from Tulsa, Oklahoma, but I live in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I was in residence from January 13th through April 8th of 2016. Hi, my name is Slinko, and I am here at Bemis. Started in January 13 and going to leave April 8th. I'm a conceptual artist, so I do a lot of different forms around different ideals that are inspired by literature, contemporary issues, mostly social issues or events like um, women's rights. I do like installation, photography. As an artist, I, my, the primary interest is power and it's different structures of power and how an individual can fit within, rebel, survive and also poke fun at power. I work as a sculptor, as a painter, and also I'm recently pretty much involved in moving image and video. My preparation was just sort of finishing creative research around the readings that I knew that I wanted to base work off of once I got here. So I reread Kurzweil's The Singularity, um, which is about our sort of technological future as part machine, part robot. And I read this book Alone Together by Sherry Turkle, which is what I wound up doing my main project here. Each of those str um, strings represents a body, and each of the red lines on the strings represents a cell phone. When you walk through the installation, it, you like you want to like bring your body, like your arms away. You don't want to like hurt things, um, and so you are sort of protecting yourself in the way that you do protect and curate yourself through your, your devices. I had uh, about six months to prepare for this residency, and I had a project in mind for which I did many storyboards and sketches and some of the research. And the project was to look at a phenomena of revolution as an um, anthropological event or observe it through these kind of structures of ritual or mythology, um, also behavioral things um, that could be assigned to symbols like flags or social gatherings in public spaces, landscape, or even food. So one of the scenes I shot here was a scene where bread puppets they fight off, they dance together, they rip breads off each other. And it had a little bit to do with this very simple notion of bread riots or having to, having to start with the basic need to survive, which is kind of the food and shelter, and then take it into a symbolic realm and re-examine it as a, a moving image. Oh, I also did a political work. Um, inspired by the election year. Another flag. It, yeah, it's a flag. It's a white flag, um, and it, it depicts the Supreme Court. Um, as of January 31st, I decided to treat it like the Constitution, like it's a living document. This idea of a flag as a symbol of a state and a nation, and also take it a little bit further and explore it as um, a thing behind which power can hide, and some of the darker sides of nationalism and borders, which for me overlap with current events, with the election campaign, but also with the immigrant crisis in Europe. So every morning I wake up and I read the news and that kind of feeds into the thinking about the work. So the project unfolds as the event unfold in, in the world, really. I, I saw, um, we, b before we come to BMS, you can, you guys send out the list of people until we like look, or I assume people Googled everyone, cause I know I did. And I was like, oh, I love this person. I like, I want to know her, her work is so cool. Um, I did you know. not know that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and so I kind of knew that your work would be political in some way. So I was interested to see what you did and or what you were going to be doing here. Um, and I know that like with the flags, there were like some like minimal issues around like how Americans, like really like sort of entrenched Americans would take it in, in sort of relation to um, the history of 
racism coned yeah coned i don't think it's a minor issue hooded, and it, it did um, figures yeah. okay yeah. It, uh Toisha brought it up frontally and mm -hmm. so i had to really stop and think about it a lot Toisha's work is very conceptual and what i respect about it is that until you know her it doesn't actually say necessarily that is gendered or ra racial work which is sometimes in the art world the artist who is black and and um, gay so they're expected to produce certain work which it has become like a trope and i and i respect that there is a level of agency and a level of personal freedom to decide for yourself what kind of work you're going to make I think my personal work is not there yet because it's still untangling from my Soviet past because it shaped me so heavily that I, I'm in the process of leaving my past and entering my future <laughs> with the work. It, it, it's kind of, it, it exists underneath, so it's very hard to catch how it works on you and I'm very interested in, in exposing those skeletons of power. Certainly being back in the Midwest brought back up all these feelings and these reasons that I left the Midwest. But I think that it is nice to, to be in a place where the culture that you're getting and the, the work that you're making is um, more internalized. I enjoyed being in the space of BMS because that amount of space for me to produce work and to just think about what I can shoot is, it was very productive, it was very ambitious. I feel like it let me kind of grow into the space because I, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm like the, the fish in the fish tank. You put me in a bigger tank, I'll just get bigger. <laughs> so, 